Hey Andrea, a few weeks ago we did a video showing off the new Land Cruiser with the old Land Cruiser. Yes. And today we've got some more information to share with you guys. And Andre, ta-da! Bam! There it is. Yes, Toyota released what is really the front fascia of the new Toyota Land Cruiser. It's right here on the side, obviously. They have an older Land Cruiser, you know, the beloved uh, Land Cruiser behind it. But we can learn a lot from this image, can't we? Yeah, so in this video we'll do a quick analysis of what we are seeing and then we can kind of guess at the competition and finally guess at the price, uh, giving you hopefully um, a more holistic picture of what's coming. Now, uh, the press release <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, said that the Land Cruiser is coming when? Uh, can we go to the press release? It will be fully unveiled on August 1st of this year which is coming at, soon at 9 20 p.m eastern so it's going to be in the evening of august 1st tfl is going to be there yeah that's next week yes so please stay tuned we won't be showing you bumper covers no. we'll be showing you the entire vehicle yeah tommy's got a reservation to be at the event uh, right. i promise you we will be one of the first uh, to show you what it's all about so let's start with what we're seeing here what do you think of the schnoz. So if you squint, Roman, yes. squint for a minute. I'm squinting. I, I'm, it, this all, almost looks like the Hummer to me. You know, that horizontal lamp, it doesn't go all the way across, uh, but it has that blocky, really, really masculine appearance. And it's got, I think, Toyota written on its grill. Yeah, I see a couple of things. I also see what looks like a skid plate or at least a faux skid plate right there. Mm -hmm. And what's this? I don't know, it could be a fog lamp. You have parking sensors. Yes. You may even have a camera. Look at this. A little thing pointing downward. That could be a camera. Yep, and then of course, how about this? Is that a little space for air to get through? Or is that, yeah, is maybe. that, a, is that a big kind of uh, plastic, you know, the Japanese have been looking at Subaru and putting big plastic uh, side skirts and fender flares on vehicle. Could that be the start of one of those? Potentially. Well, let's look at this one more time because I want to look at it holistically. You can kind of see that horizontal lamp poking through this dark image as well. So this could be a really blocky, chunky looking SUV. And we, of course, have seen the brand new Toyota GX. Uh, which, or the Lexus. Yeah, sorry, the Lexus. Here there it is. is. Yeah, there it is. Uh, and, uh, you know, very similar uh, frontal... Uh, let's call it bone structure on these two <laughs> trucks. Huh? What do you so think? they're related. They're brothers. Yeah, and I went to the reveal of the new GX, and everybody was over the moon about how blocky and square it was. Now, it does come in two versions. There's a, a two-row, and then there's the ultimate overlander, uh, the three-row. Or vice versa. So um, so it's built on the frame. Oh, so, sorry, yeah. I got that wrong. So y yeah, vice versa. Row, and then they take away the third row to give you... But the, there's room for those folding seats, right? Cause which is classic Toyota yeah, Land Cruiser. They come off the side of the vehicle, not like a traditional third row that like is in the back of the second row. So I think Toyota and Lexus will have a challenge, right? They have a lot of SUVs, right? They have the, the, the LX, the new GX, they have the Sequoia, they have the Forerunner. They have the, this new Land Cruiser is coming. So it's going to be quite complicated, right? It's going to be even more complicated than that because <laughs> now, for some reason, there was like a dearth of these off-roaders, right? Luxury off-roaders. And then all of a sudden, there was a huge sea change. And now there's a lot of competition. So I, I count among the direct competitors, uh, the Land Rover Defender. Yes. Of course. Yeah. Makes I would, sense. I would say the Ineos Grenadier. The new one, yes. Which, which is coming, supposedly. The SUV is coming, and then the pickup truck, too. Which is, the SUV is coming in September, supposedly, so we shall see. Um, then, of course, you've got things that are electric, uh, like the Rivian R1S. Yes. Um, I think that also competes. Uh, and then, you know, kind of tangentially, tangentially, yeah. you, you've got things like, you know, the GM products, like the Tahoe, maybe the Yukon. And they have off-roady versions of those, exactly, too. Exactly, yeah. And then, I mean, at a high level, you can have also the G-Wagon, right? G-Wagon's price is way in the six figures territory. I think the new Land Cruiser, and we don't have the price on the new GX either, but I think the new Land Cruiser will be around 60-ish. Is that possible, do you think, to start? And maybe from 60 to 80? Well, what, what do you think? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I was only like halfway through my list. So, uh, <laughs> Armada... <laughs> Explorer, right? Maybe on, on, the, uh, on the lower end. Am but I, we're, I, we're, we're talking about off-road chops, you know. How about I, the Timberline Explorer? 
Oh, it's like half an inch higher from the ground. <laughs> I don't think we've actually tested one of those, have we? Have we had a Timberline? No. Yeah, we haven't no. had. Ford, if Ford? you're listening, please send us a Timberline. And then we can compare it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so well, let's talk about price. Well, so the new Sequoia is out. The 2023 Sequoia. Let me make, make it a little larger. Uh, Poof, it disappeared. There it there is. There it's back. Starts at 59.8. A lot of new Sequoias. Well, first of all, all of them are hybrids. Right, they have the three and a half, I mean, 3.4 liter twin turbo V6 hybrid. Uh, a lot of them go for almost 80 grand because after you add all the options and all the features, you know, it says 72 is shown and I've seen them at $80,000. So how much does the current GX go for? Not the new one, the current one. Yeah, let's take a look. The current GX, because that could give us a guideline, right? Yeah. Could give us a nice guideline so we for- could, we, could, we could kind of slot it into this Lexus lineup, right? Ooh. Look at the new, uh, the current, the old GX starts at 59 too. So, so the question I have for you, Andre, yes. is will the, <laughs> if if the Land Cruiser wore a Lexus, would it fit in here between those yeah. two? You think it would go right in or between? Here. Or here. Or you think it would go there? I think it's between. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So we're looking at somewhere between 60,000 and 90,000. Yeah. I think that's a realistic guess. Because it used to be expensive, right? The right. big Land Cruiser that they had before, was ninety thousand dollars plus? So a Defender probably starts about the same as this. Probably, but most of them are in the seventy, yeah. to eighty thousand dollar range. Yeah, um, I think the same thing. And by the way, uh, the manufacturers definitely benchmark the pricing. They know to within a penny where the competitors mm -hmm. are at, and not just where they're starting, but they benchmark at each like trim level, right? And, and and not just trim level, but like specific. Uh, features and options. How about my sunroof? How much should my sunroof cost? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, they know. They know. So, so, yeah. so they build them out, you know, apples to apples, and then they either price them above or below depending on how they feel uh, their vehicles should be priced. So the two most, I think, direct competitors are, like I said, um, we have the Grenadier, which is going to be around 70000 Like 72 ish yeah, right? Depending yeah, on so it's in the same neighborhood. And the Defender. Right. Yeah, and that's another one that's going to be in that. So I think it's a real guess. Now, to my ears, Land Cruiser has more of an iconic sound and thus higher price mm -hmm. <laughs> than uh, a Defender, even though Defender's been around and certainly much more than, uh, let's say, uh, well, Defend R1S, right? That, that one is completely... Defender has name recognition too. Yeah. Uh, I'm just trying to look up a price on it right now. And, and I know you guys may be wondering, how come we're comparing kind of apples to oranges? Why am I comparing um, you know, an electric car to an internal combustion car, which we suspect will be the power plant? I don't think it's going to be an electric Land Cruiser. It could either. be a hybrid. Could be a hybrid. Yeah, it could yeah. be a hybrid. But, but I think um, people cross shop these things more than you think. I don't think people are like, hey, I have to have an electric car. So I'm going to go get myself a Rivian versus, hey, I have to have a gas-powered car, so I'm going to go get myself a Defender, or maybe even a Range Rover Sport. I mean, that's also, or a Discovery. That's another mm. one. Gosh, Yeah, Disco. Of, disco. Yeah, I think people forget the Disco because this has kind of sopped up the limelight. Yeah, uh, but the Defender, like you said, you know, starts at about 60000 and goes quickly to 67 and 72. So that's why I think the new Land Cruiser will be in this price range. That's my guess. Yeah, they're both kind of iconic nameplates that yeah. have been around for a long time. Um, I'm just happy it's coming. I'm, I think it's good. Yeah, and the other thing about this is that, of course, Toyota's uh, legendary, dare I say, iconic reputation for reliability, I think, will tip the scales for a lot of new car buyers. Or just the badge itself, right? I think there's, there's yeah. a lot of like pent-up demand, right? And keep in mind, guys, we are well aware that there is a 300 series Land Cruiser. Overseas. Overseas yes. in places like Saudi Arabia that we don't get. Uh, we're going to have a very specific model that isn't going to be uh, that. Uh, so, uh, I, like I said, I think this will be uh, a more, let's say, sister or brother to the new GX. Now, what do you think powertrain? The GX comes with basically the same powertrain uh, that's in the Tundra. Yeah, I think this will continue that. You know, remember there was a controversy. A twin turbo. Yeah. There was a controversy that this could have the four cylinder from the Tacoma. Yes. I think that's a little bit too small of an engine for, for this vehicle. Yeah. So we'll have to see, but I think it's going to be a twin turbo V6. And there is a hybrid version of the twin turbo V6. Exactly. Exactly. Not so that it does much <laughs> in terms of fuel. It economy. gives you some torque, but not a lot of economy. Uh, so I'm excited. Yeah, so Tommy is going to be there next week, August 1st. Uh, come back and uh, enough teasing and we're actually going to go see the real thing. I can't wait because I think uh, 
uh, you know, this is one of the vehicles that I'm looking forward to the most this year uh, in terms of new vehicles, and I can't wait to get it um, out to Moab, Andre, of course. Yes. I also want a taco. I want a taco as well. Of course. Yeah, so Toyota's got a lot of cool, <laughs> yes. cool stuff coming yeah, they, down they the do. pipe. They do. And remember, guys, go to alttfl.com if you want to see uh, more of TFL videos. And coming up very soon, we've got our cheap Jeep series starting. So Andre and I just got back from Moab where we actually, um, well, uh, we're off-roading at 106 degree heat. And it's in, a, in old Jeeps. In old Jeeps. And ironically, there's not a lot of people in Moab in the middle of uh, summer. Zero people camping. I've never <laughs> seen that before at 106 degrees. All right. See you guys next time. Ciao. Okay.